Oh, hi. It's an exciting one today because I get to introduce you guys to Ren. You have seen a little bit of Ren in last week's video um, in terms of the goal setting for me for 2024. So you'll have seen some stuff about that. But I want to, first of all, start at the top here and say that this is not going to run like Bright Diaries because we've done Bright Diaries already. So when Bright was a puppy, which was three years ago, um, or about three years ago, Bright Diaries ended-ish. I'll go ahead and link to Bright Diaries above now. We went through each individual behavior that's useful for photography like the sit for example um, as each video this is not going to run like that we're going to do basically like vlog style run week one run week two run week three etc etc um, just to show you a little bit more about everything that happens rather than just like the one behavior so we didn't show you with bright anything about toilet training crate training uh travel training, um, interaction with other dogs, exposure training, desensitization training. We didn't show you any of those things because um, they weren't the point. This time I'm gonna show you basically a, a little bit of everything, but not every single clip of every single moment of this puppy's life is going to be included in Rent Diaries because I don't film that much of everything else, but I'll take you through the key line stuff and make sure that you're aware of everything that we've been doing. It's probably a good idea to calm everybody who knows the breed down and also uh, go ahead and just explain a few little things before we get started. First of all, do not copy what I'm doing. Please do not get this breed of dog. I'm already worried about that because it's about welfare, it's about safety, it's about everything involved. So. I've put off getting this breed of dog for a long time. Um, I knew at times in the past, you know, I just wasn't ready. I wasn't set up for this type of dog. But um, this time I was like, I can't get this breed because of what people on the internet will do. And that is not a good way to make decisions for your life, as I alluded to last year in my goal recap video. Um, instead, uh, what I just want to make super clear up front here is that you might have come to this video from videos that we will release two, three, four years in the future, you will have seen the finished version. Just like everybody sees the finished version of Alfie and the semi-finished version of Bright, the finished version of Bright, and they say, oh my God, that dog's amazing. I'm going to get a Border Collie. I'm going to get a Border Collie. The amount of people who got a black and white Border Collie after seeing Alfie on YouTube in 2020 is insane. Let me tell you guys the important part about those dogs, Pippi as well, who's also really well trained um, and will be Ren as well, is that um, it takes a huge amount of work, a huge amount of work to train any of those dogs to do and behave the way that they do, especially in public. So you'll see Alfie on big stages with big crowds of people. You definitely won't see Pippi there because she's terrified of them. Um, but you see those things and you think, oh my good God, that dog breed is just amazing. They don't come out of the womb like that. They're not done. They're not done when you get them. And this breed of dog, Ren, is not one that I ever want anybody to look at the finished article. I want that. I'm going to get the puppy. That's not, that's not the case. Okay. Most dog trainers wouldn't have one of these dogs. Um, and that's the truth. And I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm making it more dramatic than it is, but there's a reason why most people say that these dogs are German shepherds on crack, cocaine, legitimate drugs. There's a reason why people say that this is like a border collie on acid. It's, it's, next level energy, next level confidence, like a serious level of confidence, and next level challenging in terms of their innate desires. They are bred to do a job and their job that the most of them are bred for now is bite work. So police, protection, monitoring, those things, that is what the dogs are bred to do. If you don't want a puppy that barks, don't get one. If you don't want a puppy that you're gonna need to do multiple training sessions every single day, probably of its life, don't get one of these dogs. I know that that was like a bit much, but um, this is just my biggest worry with with having Ren in our whole, uh, in our family, in our household, and in our work with the job that she's going to do is that people are going to think it's just a good idea, and I just want to say it's not. It's not. If if you if you are not getting one of these dogs because you're going to do the job with it, and that's the reason why you get the dog, then um, not one of these. Go for a different. Go for a different breed. Go for a show line border collie a show line, something else that's f busy, Cocker Spaniel. If you want to be doing a job and you want to be doing that level of training and management every single day of the dog's life, go for the working line of those things. 
Oh, still really worries me about that, but I shouldn't make decisions about my own personal life and my own professional life and Dan's sport desires um, based on what someone's going to say on the internet. So we're not. So we will move on and look at exactly what happened in week one of Ren Diaries. And I'll walk you through as well some little bits of information about her as we move forwards. The first thing to remember is that she is a relative. She is the great niece, I think. I'm fairly certain that's the family tree there of Dora, who some of you guys will know quite well from some of my work. So Dan has loved Dora since the start. It's partly, well, and it's mostly Jess's fault in all fairness that we have Ren. Um, uh, Dora is from the same kennel so she's bred by Avonwolf most of the Avonwolf dogs work in police uh, but also in uh, bite sports um, and uh, the, the breeder in this situation is um, absolutely fantastic for matching the puppies to people who are on the the wait list right so um ren was matched with us we did not pick ren from the litter um she was matched with us based on what we need her to do as her job and also what we want from a puppy and our household and it was a really good pick from the breeder. So fantastic that that's turned out that way. But also Ren is very small. Some of you will be like, oh my God, she's super small. She is small. She is small for the breed. She is. It's because this um, specific mating was not for bite sports. So this specific mating was to create sport dogs um, for agility and other kind of non-bite related sports and, and that was the purpose of the mating and hence why we were quite interested in this specific mating to produce a slightly more petite sportier model um, of a Malinois but still just as powerful and eager to work which is exactly what we need from us so without further ado we'll jump in and let's meet Ren. We'll start here in the breeder's home. So this is Avonwolf Masked Renegade on day one, uh, which is pretty exciting. So it was quite a long trip to go and collect her. So we had a lot of travel to do. And this is the first time she's ever been alone in a crate, as far as I know. And so I put the back seats down just so that she could still see us up in the front. And whilst we were here, and because it was such a long trip, she she um, obviously had some moments where she maybe had a bit of a cry. I usually just sing to them and I sing the same song. So it never changes. And if I need to rely on it in the future, they usually know, okay, I can chill and calm down. So whilst we were in the car, because we were going for so long, we also had to stop for a toilet break. And so she had to use the bathroom. Um, and so she did. She already prefers to go outside anyway. Getting home, it was pretty late. She slept most of the trip. So she's wired. Absolutely happy as anything, bombing about the garden. I thought she would be potentially a little bit quiet, as in quite overwhelmed, maybe a little bit worried, maybe just really tired, maybe pining for her little family, but no, not the case. Feisty piranha at the start, which is always good news. The other dogs are like, what the heck, not another one. <laughs> um, but it was time to do some uh, sort of um, just little bits of engagement just so she knew you know we were friends so we started with a little bit of toy play Dan was already wanting to do toy switches a little bit early but Ren was happy to oblige so a little bit of play and then she had a little bit of decompression time to herself where she was absolutely happy as Larry and all the time I'm just sort of like sussing the puppy out like where where is our personality at she is very typical to be honest with you but we did need to at some point let the dogs meet keep them separate all of the time no um, unsupervised um, time to meet this was the first meetings um, and it's one dog at a time um, usually with my best dogs first so Alfie first no interest whatsoever um, he doesn't really get interested in puppies till they're older Beanie wanted to go and say hi these two We've got an on-running saga, so we'll re recircle back. What we ought to do, though, is just show Pippi meeting. So Pippi is um, the least sociable, should we say, and she is the fun police. Um, but this was a really good meeting. No leads, no pressures, nothing like that. I know I can call the dogs if I need to. So that all went well. 
Ren's mixed and mingled. Finn, we, we just keep out of the way of puppies until we're confident that we're all good. So uh, no worries whatsoever with her. She's already showing that she's super bold and wants to be out doing stuff. So started doing the first bits of crate training. So this is her normal sleeping quarters, should we say. So the crate hidden here is a lot bigger than I would usually start with for a puppy. So I was happy to go and switch the crates over if required, but it wasn't actually needed. So we start with sort of baby bits. All of this has already been covered in Bright Diaries. There's just a few bits that I just thought I'd show. So brand new puppy, I'm still sussing her out. That's still going to be a thing for quite a while. It's quite late on now. And I want to just get her used to me, making sure that she's sort of starting to learn little bits of her name, starting to get used to touch, starting to go into and out of the crate area, um, starting to follow food, starting to listen to a clicker, all of those things. So we're starting to charge the name, we're starting to charge the clicker, and we're starting to charge luring, essentially. And that's the whole purpose of this. So there's nothing dramatic about this. It's just a case of sort of starting to develop some um, baby skills, like going into and out of the crate. No verbals other than her name occasionally. So um, also I wanted to test how we were at with our food motivation and luring. Food motivation was okay. Um, she had been fed raw and I won't train puppies on raw just because it's too messy I'm not very good as you will see later on so she's on um cut up literally Dan cuts up kibble so that it's really small and so she's on that right now by day two we'd switch to integrate cheese by day three we'd switch cheese out for chicken just because it didn't have like a perfect effect in the stomach so um, all she's doing, I've just added a verbal there for in and she's going straight up into the crate. And so that's fine. That's fine for this session. She had a few more snacks, played with the ball that you can see on the side there. Uh, and then that's it. Uh, no dramas. It's like literal basic baby bits and um, obviously hilarious to watch. She's so much more coordinated now. Watching this is hilarious and it's only a week ago. So yeah crazy times for this little puppy. So that was session one of life skills with Ren. Then the next morning, what we've got ahead and done is this is quite early in the morning. She's just having a mix and mingle, seeing how she susses out the rest of the dogs. And she's just learning that Pippi needs a little bit of space. She's very respectful um, of the other dogs and she knows what she's is and isn't allowed to do crates absolutely fine normal puppy cries but sh nothing dramatic she's really confident so it's made it fairly simple uh, but she does have some pipes on her as we would expect but no perfectly fine in the crate happy to settle and understanding that we're not going to leave her so 10 out of 10 First official training session, little poopy. So major life skills I like to do here is just basically don't jump up at me. Um, and so that's this. She's jumping up at the pot and she's learning that when she stays on the floor, she actually gets what she wants from it. So it's fairly... Um, it's the same with every dog so no you're not going to get anything from me if you push it and that's what we're doing here so pause on the floor and relaxed um is fine and then we're doing some lures and sits with the help of also the clicker which have charged so what i've not mentioned so far basically is that every single meal and in her case it's three to four times a day Every single meal is hand fed, always with training. If there's a time that I'm not training, then she gets her meal inside an interactive toy like a Kong. So she doesn't even have a food bowl yet. And we won't have a food bowl for her until maybe four, five, six months old. Um, everything is hand fed to build engagement and to build um, a relationship and also to build drive for food and a whole host of other bits and pieces. So um, she's just learning some little bits about a sit, um, just already progressing up to kneeling and then we will progress up to standing later on. So for session one, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, keeping things chill, 
normal puppy stuff. This day was exciting though because we went out for a family event which was a walk in the freezing Baltic winds of the North Sea on the Humber Bank. So um, little Wren came because I can't leave a puppy and so she came wrapped up in Dan's top. It was absolutely freezing cold but um, she was really happy to come out. She loved to see everybody. She met loads of humans and learned that humans are friends not food which is fantastic and um, she also enjoyed sort of watching everybody she got a little bit frustrated when she saw other dogs playing but obviously you know she's not allowed to go and interact with stranger dogs at the moment um, but what we did do was we just popped onto this area of um uh, it's a farm track where we know not many people have been and just started to do some little baby bits from her, well, I don't know, I'm not going to officially call it heel work, but I mean, I mean, I mean but I don't know how you'd classify it. So she does these um, food follows. These are really good for if you do need to redirect a dog in the future. If they've done this drill like every day, it's f- fairly easy I was going to say super easy it's fairly easy to redirect a dog out of any situation by literally just bending your hand down and giving a cue so no there's no verbals for this it's literally just we follow a hand of food and we get snacks as we go along um, and she really enjoyed doing this you can't and I can't underestimate how windy that was though so that night we had a crazy play and then it was literally just time to chill out and go to sleep I mean for everybody me included in that too so really good day that one that was good exposures for her so started up with training and this was super early in the morning oh my goodness it was really early for me on that day which is a weekend in terms of what she was working on today we wanted to start to look at a down because sit was fine so um just a case of starting to build that behavior you can see i've left some it some of these clips in here about like the sticky bits like the difficult parts so she's just trying to work out how to get the snacks and I'm rewarding for any effort rather than the effort and then start to um, go ahead and, and actually reward and double reward, jackpot reward and heavy reward for um, correct placement, correct form. But you can see how she doesn't understand. She's shuffling backwards and she's trying to suss it out. And then we get that little kind of brainwave moment there. And then I jackpot reward it. And that's all that's needed for her to really understand what we're going for here. After that point, it does come a little bit easier. Down's not a immediate default behavior for her. Whereas, for example, with Pippi, that's her favorite position. It always has been and it always will be. So uh, for her, this is going to take maybe a little bit more proofing. That sits basic and simple, not difficult whatsoever. So again... How to train it down in full is in Bright Diaries. We don't need to include that in Ren Diaries. So it's just a case of me kind of showing you everything else that we're covering off. So we've got little bits of the training in here, but I, for her, she will get too bored too quickly. Um, and so she needs to have a little bit more to go at in a session so we can do some lures into the downs and then we can move on to do something completely different a little bit of uh, just play between both of us <laughs> and also uh, just starting to work on some little bits of bite inhibition and some manners because uh, that's something that th- th- these puppies are kind of bred to be full on and mouthy. That's the point of them. So we're working on that. She met her first tennis ball, uh, which was a very exciting moment as well. And it's just a case of yeah, giving her outlets for what her brain and her body want her to do instinctively. Um, and then also just shaping it in like a really positive way. So you'll see that more in week two and three and four and five but um more so at this stage it's just a case of like safety making sure that she is finding fulfillment enjoyment and also sort of outlets for a drive without overcooking her little bones because it would be so easy to do with 
this breed of dog like it just would it would be so easy so um little piranha teeth there and then nap time throughout every single day she naps either in the house or in the studio with one of us so we're not always in eyesight but we're always there and she, she settles really well in her crate and pen and then uh, we also take her out for little excursions either once or twice a day just either if we're just going in the car somewhere to let her see something new see people or different types of people sizes of people ages of people children animals different farm animals pet animals all sorts so she's been to the yard to see the horses by this point and um, it's just a case basically of making sure she's a happy bear then training because it's like lunchtime or something now I believe this will be lunchtime the same day so um, we're doing just some sort of like fun little bits starting to build some not recall but name association so that's something that we're also doing in week one. So starting to make sure she knows her name, Ren, and making sure that, that will get a fairly immediate head turn. And then we can start building on top of that a recall in the future. Proofing behaviors that we've already sort of started to shape. So sits, downs, I've not really officially started stands, but that was a recall drill. And then her little heel work game, which helps to get her really engaged, starting to get a little bit more structure to that, just so that the shape of it is not a disaster. Um, starting to speed up some little bits, making sure it's super fun. Uh, and, and just basically keeping it quite interesting for her. So this is the first time she's had her collar on in the training and you can see she's not enjoying that. So it's a case of not making a big deal out of it, just redirecting it. After two days, she doesn't notice her collar anymore. But for this session, it was proven to be a little bit of a distraction for her. So instead of kind of ruining the session, it was a case of let's just remove the collar for now and then we'll start to build up the collar wear a little bit later on. So um, I don't have dogs living collars in indoors it's just not for me I don't think it's particularly safe but each to their own however it is important that a puppy learns to just completely ignore having that piece of equipment on so you can see it's come off for now and we can get a little bit more concentration out of her a little bit faster and you'll notice I'm I've just faded in those little clips there all hand guides for the down so play is really important. I haven't included all of the play sessions, but we do play lots of different types of toys. This is a good one, which is, you'll remember from Bright Diaries, this was Bright's puppy toy. Um, but this is a really good one because it means that she can still win and uh, technically can't leg off with the toy. So we start in with this and then you'll see her first ever proper leaves. there so again toy drive already included in bright diaries for step by steps but you can see how it all comes together and just to illustrate that's the tension that you we i i have on the toy so it's literally can run through fingers it's it we're not pulling we're not tugging properly it's literally just pressure to just hold it in place so then i need to remove the toy but i'm not going to use a leave for that that's not an option for me. The leave needs to be positive. So she's fed food and the toy disappears. And as I say in this clip, that was very uncoordinated. Uncoordinated, wasn't it? Then? <laughs> um, but yeah, so then after every session, she goes out to go to the toilet and toilet training on shoes like that. And then she goes back to bed and then she naps. And then we go again at the next training session. And it literally is just clockwork. So it's toilet out of the crate, then train then toilet then crate then nap then toilet then nap then out then train then toilet and so on and so forth so it kind of runs on just a cycle so every day she sort of knows what's going to happen at each time and it helps with toilet training and with crate training for her to know that just chilling in the crate's fine so this is um different day or later on that day goodness me I couldn't remember but I think um, that was later that evening and so we're just sort of like working on some little bits and pieces 
always start with this game just to get her engaged a little bit because she really loves it and then we can move on to either working on new things working on the same things so for her no handler for a down you can see that little malinois chatter of the teeth which is hilarious um but um yeah so she's doing now standing downs with no hands perfect so i think that was like one day for that, I don't know. Uh, but then again, back to this little game. I don't need it to be perfect. Like I said at the start, we're not doing any competitive obedience or competitive bite sports or anything like that. So I don't need perfect um, positioning or anything. It's just a case of, for me, I like it. I like training this and I like the management of it. And that was her first down not facing me as well, which was super. So heavy reward for that. And then out for fun. So... Also, just if we've kind of finished and I feel like we're at a happy place to leave a, a behavior, instead of just scattering the food on the floor, we'll go and work on something that either needs a little bit more work, like her going into a crate. You can see that was not reluctant, but it took a while. So then I want her to be able to me give the word in and her go and step straight in. Perfect. Nap time. We also did do a little photo shoot on this. So she's got out of bed, gone to the toilet, and then we've just introducing her to this. This is the first time she's been up on an object. You can see that she's like, mm, not 100% sure about that. Dan's making sure that she's got someone right next to her, hands there, there's no risk of her falling off. And all we want to see if she'll do is eat a snack. So if she can eat a snack, then we know if she, that she's happy. She just was happy to step forwards. She's eating some little shredded chicken and um, treats. And then you can see when she goes back onto this a second time, and Dan again is guiding that sit from the lure, um, she's fine. There's just the, she doesn't have an issue with being up on the object. And um, as a result of that, I can take a few pictures. Dan can go back in and feed after um, a few have been taken for her. And then that's it. Job done. So super cute little poopa studio bootcamp skills in play. Then we uh, also have a little bit of when she's been to the toilet, going back in the house, she can go and interact with the other dogs um, in, in a managed way. So I'll watch them. And you'll see this is the moment that Bright goes, oh, new fun buddy. And this is something that does need some management. So I did intervene on this occasion just because I was concerned after a little bit of time about how her joints were going to deal with jumping on and off stuff and being rolled. So I was like, mm, flat no, but we'll circle back to that in the future. The main thing for me is making sure that her toilet training works well. So I think there's been maybe one or two accidents inside. Um, I think maybe only one on week one, I think. Um, other than that, We've been ahead of the game for everything. Dan's on night shift. Uh, I do most of the day shift, depending on what we're doing. But every 1.5 to 2 hours, we're outside. After eating and drinking, we're outside. After play and training, we're outside. And that's kind of it. So when we wake up, after we eat and so on and so forth. And we were, she was already worked out where she likes to go to the toilet. So we just go to those. So um, here I'm waiting for her to go and do number two because it should be on schedule. And there we go. So to not ruin her privacy, I cut that part out. But then after every single time she goes, she gets um, a big reward and snacks. You have to be careful with this, but it works for us. So then she knows the drill, she goes back in and we continue onwards. So um, this time, another morning, um, you can see my chill, you can see my Zoom attire. Um, <laughs> fairly dressed-ish on the top half and then pyjamas on the bottom. So it is winter, it's very cold here at the moment and it's been horrendous weather. So a lot of our training has to be inside. Uh, it's just been awful. But you can see her confidence is increasing, her speed is increasing, her motivation is increasing and I've got some chicken out today to really do some work so she's doing some super jobs just again just little bits to get her engaged before we start to work on whatever skill it is that we're wanting to work on for that training session in this occasion I've asked her for a down there's a bit too much of a delay for me I'm not that impressed by that no offense little Remba, but we need to work on a couple of downs and that was much better. So we, I feel confident and happy to move forwards, maybe do a couple more. And then move on to whatever behavior it is that I'm feeling is important for this day. So I thought I'd do extra little bit of a healy work type thing. So we're working on heel work finish. It, I just 
like doing it. It's just a fun thing for me. So really trying to work on having her automatically snap around the back and um, you'll have to wait for week two to see if that's come to fruition. <laughs> but essentially, uh, this is a really fun game. It drives engagement, it drives possession. Now she's picked up my slipper. So instead of do, having a big screaming abdag about it, I just get hold of it and then transition her off with food. Um, onto another object and then get her attention and ask her to do something and that's a good way of kind of keeping her engaged you can see she's a little bit overtired in this session that's why the teeth are coming out that's why we've got a little bit of snappy piranha and that's normal so we just ask her to do a different thing and move on so there's no need to use corrections with a puppy at this age it's quite easy to re-divert and then at two, three weeks after they've come home, that's when it's a case of, look, does this need more management or more intervention or not? And at this age, it's fine. It's fine. So um, she's a happy little papa. We keep moving. She just came back and decided to not go and pick something up. So we're making it really simple, really fun, really engaging, and then just drop straight into some toy play, some more leave it. Really important life skills. I know it might seem silly that toy play is not life skills, but the leave is life skills. So you can say leave against anything. She tries to pick up something that's dangerous. Leave. This is the first time she's met horses. And you can see that it was absolutely freezing cold and raining. So she's in bright pajamas at the moment. In this case, she is just learning that everything is okay. Like nothing's going to come and eat her. We're not expecting her to do anything, but it's okay. I've included this clip of Ren being a little bit over the top with Bright because I wanted to show you how I just let my dogs manage their own business. And this is the first time Bright's had to manage a puppy's business. And so we'll see how this develops over the rest of this week because there's more. But first we have to go to the vets because she needs to have a health check, her vaccinations, be registered. And all of that was also done in week one. I think I've gone wrong on my like days, to be honest, but whatever. This also happened. So she's in the vets. The vet was very happy with her, very impressed with the fact that she did a perfect sit on the table and on the scales. But really happy papa, all sorted on that front. So then it is a case of, again, more naps, more chill time. We're not with her 24-7. She's playing with the toy by herself in there. Cool. Perfect. Ren, what are we doing today? Well, I'm cold. Technically, we're learning a little bit about leave it. So managing frustration, managing a little bit of self-control. You can see that um, she's working on that. So I'm just looking for a little bit of a brief kind of relax in the body. And at that point, then she can get the reward. So I don't need her to do anything, just kind of chill. And it, it's really useful life skill again, <laughs> pretty much life skill. Technically, she does already know the word leave from toy play, but it's not fully proofed. And it's just a case of then just getting, making sure that she fully understands that before we can move on to something else. So I thought we would do a little bit more of a test. So we've got the big pot of all of the snacks and chicken. So we've got all sorts in there. Should have covered it earlier. My bad. But again, just waiting for that leave. You all know if you've watched stuff that I have pots of snacks next to me on the floor at all times. No dog is allowed to go and help themselves. Um, and that's trained here at this moment so it's just all the same the chill time needs to extend kind of on throughout so I need to be able to walk around a room without having a dog kind of expect that we're going to do something and have a party so again we just walk and move about normally and I'm not looking at her but obviously my camera is so that's normal day-to-day -day stuff she also, at this stage, if she's showing signs that she really does need to bite stuff, as in teething-wise, then she can have some frozen tea towels. So it's just a frozen kitchen towel, and um, so it's wet, tied with knots in, and then frozen, and then she can just chomp away on that, and we can get her a new one. We always have a few in the freezer as we move forward. So I don't know if anyone else does that, but that's me. Here's some frustration. 
I won't let you listen to the whole thing, but essentially she also learns at this stage that barking, crying, um, and essentially vocalizing is not going to get a response from us, which helps with crate training, attention seeking, and just general self-control, self-management. So she's gone instead to her toys. Then we can have a play with those toys. She knows that interaction is on our time, not hers. At the end of the day, our lives do not revolve around the dogs. They do a bit, but we manage the dogs in our lives rather than the other way around. So there's a little bit of her baby recall training. So just in case of like name association and then start working on a new thing. And in this one, there's a distraction in the room. So we've got Dan in the room as well. So starting to sort of build up the ante at about three to four weeks in, we would be working with distractions in lots of cases. But at this stage, usually it's quite a sterile environment. There is a lot going on in here, though, to be honest. So I thought this time, why not we'll start training a flat down? So again, that's covered in Bright Diaries. But we're just using Bright's method, I believe, for a flat down, a little bit of a lure into it and uh, really, really quick clicks from me. I've not been perfectly timed throughout, but fairly quick clicks from me, which leaves us in a really good situation, high value food that we're essentially here a couple of maybe minutes in to the session so keeping things uh, fairly upbeat fairly simple again all meals are fed at training times which is at this stage deeply ingrained in puppy brain it's like hell yes we go and learn for some snacks um and it's just a normal part of life Again, vocalization doesn't get anything. It's me still waiting for the behavior. And then you can see how that's got a little bit faster as well at this stage, which is good. But also at this stage, I um, noticed that she doesn't need us anymore. Like every puppy sort of kind of needs the human for a bit. And some cases it's two weeks, some cases it's four weeks, some cases it's life like bright. So at this stage, I'm building on some baby weight. So this is the first time she's done this behavior. Again, weight's covered in bright diaries. But what the point is for this and the next training sessions is just to build a little bit more handler engagement and also get puppy ready for walking on a lead because she was self-rewarding quite a lot more now outside and so leash on to prevent the self-rewarding uh, but at this stage she's never walked on a lead before in her entire life so she's got no idea what that means and so we needed to do a little bit of proofing work on that she was fine with all the equipment but not pressure and so we worked on that as well as handling skills just in case of any emergencies or having to go to the vets doing this at this age is really good so you can see that she tried to pull that back leg away I just held and then released when she stayed still that's all that was. You can see the same thing with um, her ears. So she's in the lur and then the lur and her nose disconnect. And looking back at her ear again, she goes, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. And we just have that little moment and then we're good. We're all good. It's, it's strange talking about this because this just seems such normal basic bits, but maybe it's helpful. I don't know. So normal training sessions so three to four times a day and you're just seeing little clips from each of them so reinforcing past behaviors that we've learned or proofing them without so much of a handler or proofing them with me in a different position is all we're doing but also working a little bit more on like handler engagement and again no rewards for vocalization rewards for the completed behavior and you start to remove the vocalization and then if needed you can train out the vocalization but at this stage it's just if it was achieved so starting on hand touches again bright diaries um I just feel like a broken record but the actual step by steps of how to do most of those things the things I've mentioned are in Bright Diaries. Um, all of it's detailed throughout the entirety of training that 
full behavior. Here it's just you're seeing a lot of lots of different stuff. And it seems like a lot, but spread over four sessions a day for a week. It's not that much with other dogs. If you've got a little bit of maybe a slower puppy, it's going to take a lot longer. If it's an adult dog, it's going to take a lot longer. That's fine. Every dog's different. You can see Bright, and in comparison to Ren, she's slow as a snail. So we have the handler engagement building, hand focus building. She already learns to a hand really well, but outside is still a little bit too distracting. So we're just working on these bits indoors and making sure that we're starting to really proof yes as a verbal clicker. And then what we're also doing is we're starting to make sure that the name has a response to it. So you'll see me switch from training tricks and life skills like crates and stuff to genuine life skills of we need this now so we need focus attention we need ways to recall we need games to play all of those things are now becoming really really important but first you ready to go watch mommy with the horsey yeah so my downtime away from everything is to ride and I had already um, had registered for a riding clinic. So Dan came and sat in the cafe where it was a little bit warmer and this was one of Ren's first time seeing horses moving. So she sat and watched me, not really watching in all fairness. So there's me in tune, working on staying a little bit more upright over a fence and having a bit more control afterwards. Still gray area realistically but uh, Ren stayed for two hours in there and basically spent most of it asleep she did however do some really really good sits and downs and she met some other friendly people um, but it was just a case really of just chilling with dad whilst mum over there rode and said come on we need to go now <laughs> <laughs> which is fairly standard so I've kept this clip and I wanted to put it in because this is sort of like Ren having a little bit of a mad half hour bothering the other dogs you can see Alfie's body language is like mum I'd rather not uh, but he knows how to kind of remove himself from that situation the dogs then think we're going down the paddock we're not but uh, all five of them are now kind of chilling together but Ren is glue stick to Bright because Bright's quite fun and has shown some interest in her in the past, whereas the other dogs don't. Alfie is fairly neutral and disinterested. Beady says, nah, mate, go away. Um, but that was kind of strike one for Ren. And I'm going to show you all of them as they build up because this is strike two. So Bright said no and then moves away. Strike three. And some people would intervene at this point, but when strike four happens, I was like, no, Bright, you're going to have to start to intervene yourself. So she's told her again there, and you can watch the behavior. So she's like, I can play if we're friendly. Strike five. And that was good. She disengaged and then Pippi went and said, are we okay? Are we cool? And then submission. So everybody's calm and chill. But then strike six happened. Right when Bright decided she needed to go to the bathroom. And so vocalization, a real telling off, to be honest, for a puppy. She shakes to relieve the stress and then sort of just sits and contemplates life out over there with Grandpa Finn Finn for a little bit before going, actually, Mum, I think I might need you now. Some people will have differing opinions about whether I should have intervened earlier there, but Bright needs to learn and Ren needs to know she can't jump on other dogs. Anywho, trading session. Started like this, strong start. <laughs> so um, this one, different 
day, I think, or it could be that same evening, depending on kind of what I'm wearing, I'm unsure. But you can see she's already a lot more kind of put together. Look at her little flashy pointy feet. So cute. We're starting to do more hand touches now. So really building on that, making sure that that behavior is solid. We've got full understanding. And, and then I'll make it a bit harder. So starting to make sure she really does know. And then if she does really know, I can then start to properly add a verbal and then switch straight into toy play. As she gets more confident, she's going to get a little bit more ferocious. So leaves start to become a little bit more important, but no issues with those. Toilet training still a thing. So every time she does her business, she then gets some snacks, which really just helps to speed up the process, but put it on a verbal of go to toilet, if anybody was wondering. So really bad rain again. So we rained off and a quick dry off with the towel, which is again, good training. Um, before we go and kick things off with a session, you can already see there's a little bit more engagement. She really wants to be coming in and seeing like, look, mum, what are we doing today? Tell me what we need to be doing. And so um, I needed a stool for this one so that I would be a little bit closer. So again, going through all of our behaviors, making sure that we're good. Big girl. If she knows the word, she just says, uh, screw it, mom, it's not worth it for me. You're not worth my time. No, no, sit. Didn't ask for it. Sit, up, yes. Go, bit of confusion. And down. So the main focus of this session was really more to do with, again, building that recall. So tossing a toy out, name, rewarding with higher value food back in. So tossing out with kibble, rewarding back inside with chicken or chicken and kibble or anything, jackpot. But it's better when she comes back. It's just proof in the name becomes muscle memory. It really, really helps. So did a little bit of that for longer than I care to remember. And then went back into what Ren thinks is fun stuff. And the little paw on my foot's cute. So the way she um, sort of went really nicely into that, I thought we'd just keep pushing that a little bit further and uh, build the drive for it but we got to a point where I was fading the hand lure around and she was like mm, not sure but it's these failures that proof the understanding so they're really really important then she had her photo shoot, which was recorded in full for the full behind the scenes for the members and also for Studio Bootcamp. So this was a bonus one. She just nudged the lens there. And of course, me and her had to have our cuddle. So I mean, theory, I shouldn't have had any response whatsoever, but yeah, no, it's a poopy. So we have to give cuddles. My main issue here is that I thought she was going to try and eat the microphone, which likely, um, but actually it was absolutely fine. So she was having a really fun time on the colored background. So we've already done styled and propped. So we're going for just colored. And in my opinion, I think she looks absolutely fantastic in these pictures, but it's giving me like Pixar character vibes. And I'm not entirely sure whether, well, I'm hoping that it stays like that, but I don't think it will. So again, hand lowering, lowering with food, so helpful. And then she does her little sits and her baby weights. Cute. <laughs> So um, just popped her out down the paddock one morning. This is super early um, and just did her first little baby recall. Wasn't happy with how she was struggling a little bit with the weight of the lead. So needed to do harness training. And this is where you'll see our um, moment of which where we were like, right, we're going to go ahead and do toilet times on lead. So she can't self reward out there because we've got lots of fun stuff in the garden. And you'll see that when there is some 
pressure put on the lead after we've done something she knows really well, which is this. So building up confidence, reinforcing, and then asking her to move. She's like, flat, no, mate. And then it's that any relaxation or step forward is rewarded. So that's literally all I'm doing here. I almost need her to brace to be able to get the release to be able to reward. And she worked out pretty quickly how to get the reward, which is just to move towards the place where the, the pressure is coming from, which is exactly what we want. So this is just pressure and release. It's a really important thing for uh, most dogs to learn. I wouldn't probably be doing this if I was going to be doing bite sports, but I'm not. So I am. So again, pressure, release and reward. So it's just a case of, again, building those little neural networks in the brain to put A equals B. So at the moment, lead pressure is, I don't want to go. We're making lead pressure equals step and get rewarded in whatever way it wants to be. So I'm adding a little bit of lead pressure and she got a sticky point at the rug. And oops, wasn't expecting it to stick that much, but keep the pressure, keep the pressure, keep the pressure and release. So I'm not dragging her anywhere. It's just a case of you don't get stuff until you release and then she can get it. And that's absolutely fine. That's perfect. Nothing else was required on this day. It's just those baby steps of life skills. That's what's really, really important. So again, we'll stick because we want to eat the rug, keep pressure, release way faster that time, which is perfect. Seems simple, but honestly, I'd just rather train it and then the problem's solved. So ending week one now, we're at the point where we're just outside starting a little bit of recoil training on the long line now with the harness, which we've got no issue with. We no longer bite the lead, uh, which we did previously so we're learning some little bits of bite inhibition what we can eat what we can't eat and then also doing some basic behaviors outside in a non-distracting environment which is our training paddock um, and starting to build up that little bits of recall and handle engagement outside which we then build on uh, more as we move through the following week so this is week one literally like that's it I know there's a lot in there you guys I don't know if you've realized you've sat here for 53 minutes but that is everything mostly that she's done in this period of time and so I'll leave you there and um, we'll kick things off now next week with week two which will be considerably shorter than this one I absolutely promise you I just didn't want to leave anything out in case something that we've been covering might be helpful for someone somewhere so yeah that's week one of little brown bear just it we are here today another day alive we didn't die last night from a sleep dep dep deprivation. <laughs> a few um, words words about Ren. It's all right. Go on, please. She is a feisty little piranha. Nine times out of ten. But when she's tired, she's cute because she just sleeps. What do you think about owning a Malinois? It's the same as any puppy at the moment, realistically. She says. It is, realistically. It's just like Fort Knox over there, isn't it? <laughs> I think I've made it a bit wonky, Dan. Yeah. Sack the camera, man.